Brian Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're going to be talking about super rapid blooming offboard chaff launchers, or super Arbok, or sometimes just shortened all the way to Sarbok. So, this is one of the anti-missile countermeasure systems installed on the ship in 1982, and it is still a contemporary weapon system with the Navy today. Well, weapon isn't necessarily the right word. Um, this is basically a six-barreled mortar. Each side of the Iowa-class battleships up here on the O5 level, uh, in the former searchlight positions, had four of these six-barreled mortars installed. Additionally, there are ready service ammunition lockers. Additionally, there are ready service ammunition lockers um, mounted right near these for reload canisters for the SIR box. Iowa class battleships have fired these in action. Missouri in 1991 during the uh, Gulf War was fired at by Iraqi missiles and deployed her chaff successfully. So, how does this thing work? This is just the mortar tube, and there would be a canister about this big, which you would take out of the ready service locker here and slot in. And there should be six of them in this, so they would be sticking up like this. Uh, this thing has a diameter of about five inches, so the canisters are about five inches, and they're rocket propelled. So when you hit the switch, it shoots all of them from one side. The switch for these is located on each bridge wing. Uh, there's one mounted port and starboard. And most ships also have one in the combat information center. On an Iowa class battleship, that's the combat engagement center. Uh, and I have never seen a controller for Serbok in there, which may mean it's missing, or I don't know what I'm looking at, or it may mean that uh, we only ever had them installed on the bridge wings. I'm not entirely sure. So, um, this is essentially aggressive Christmas tinsel. We're firing uh, what would have originally been shredded aluminum foil, although now it's like a mylarized uh, glass fiber. Uh, and that is supposed to make a big magnetic signature. On board modern ships, these can also fire flares uh, that can defeat heat-seeking missiles in addition to the radar-seeking missiles that are defeated by the uh, chaff canisters. However, I don't believe IO-class battleships ever carried anything but the chaff. So, what is chaff? Uh, chaff is one of the earliest countermeasures uh, that was developed. During the uh, bombing raids of World War II, everybody sort of independently figured out by mid-war that uh, if you throw shredded aluminum foil out of your aircraft, the highly sophisticated radar fire control systems that had recently been developed to track and engage these strategic bombers even at night uh, are suddenly covered with returns and they don't know which is the actual aircraft and what isn't, so they can't get actual fixes to engage those airplanes. Notice that the canisters are offset to fire forward and at several different angles, so they're creating a spread. They're not all bursting in the same place. They're bursting over a wide area uh, so that it does make this big cloud and not just a little puff. So. Hopefully, and each of these four launchers is also at a slightly different angle, hopefully that is enough chaff uh, to replace the signature of the battleship, but likely not. With the development of radar-guided cruise missiles, this concept was applied to ships. Aircraft also still have flares and chaff that they can launch uh, depending on if they're being engaged by long-range radar-guided missiles or shorter-range heat-seeking missiles. Uh, but ships carry that too because they can also be engaged by missiles. The earliest countermeasures used by Iowa-class battleships were chemically filled smoke generators. These were used during World War II uh, to deter air attack, which 
was either kamikazes crashing into you or unguided bombs and torpedoes. So your attacker had to see their target. Um, these weren't all that successful, although they were widely deployed. Um, so countermeasures sort of goes out of use by the U.S. Navy post-World War II. Uh, New Jersey loses her chemical smoke generators pretty early on in her career. And then by the 80s, these are added. Uh, this is not the first deployment of CHAP on board, however. During her Vietnam deployment, uh, the ship was equipped with basically Zuni rocket launcher pods, which would normally be uh, on the underside of an aircraft. The Navy modified these so that you could manually point them at a target uh, and then not stand behind them because the blowback comes through the back of them and launch them from nearby. Uh, this was more or less a placebo that the Navy developed for the old gun cruisers and then deployed on the battleship. So our amidships 40 millimeter positions, um, each side would have had a pair of these mounted under the Mark 63 directors. Um, as far as I know, they, they were probably test fired but never used during the Vietnam War. And then we get these in the 80s. These are much more widely used, much more effective in theory at least. Um, the idea is you fire this chaff, it goes about 700 feet in the air and it explodes there and then starts to slowly fall down. Uh, missiles are pretty sophisticated, so if you fire this chaff behind your ship, well, they know that they're engaging this ship and that this is the right target, so it will continue to come at it. So when you fire chaff, you launch it where your ship is currently, and then you're supposed to do a radical maneuver to take your ship out of the missile's path so that it is locked on to a big metal target the whole time. It just doesn't realize that that big metal target left. Unfortunately, Iowa-class battleships are really freaking big metal targets, and uh, while they're maneuverable for battleships, it's nothing compared to a modern uh, missile frigate or guided missile destroyer, uh, so I doubt they could effectively get out of the way, uh, and it's likely that this wouldn't work. When Missouri launched her chaff, uh, the Iraqi missile was shot down prior to getting there, uh, but the chaff did attract uh, Sea Whiz, close-in weapon system fire from other ships in the task force, and they shot through the chaff cloud and into the battleship. Uh, so it was maybe more dangerous to deploy it than it was not to. Typically, modern ships have this as a last resort, and, and they've got a series of long and short range anti-air missiles that they can fire at incoming missiles. Iowa class battleships have no uh, long range or intermediate range weapon system. Uh, the long range missiles such as the uh, SM-2 need vertical launch tubes uh, and we don't have those and the uh, mid-range missile, the NATO Sea Sparrow, couldn't withstand the shock of the ship's guns going off, and so even though they were planned in early 80s plans, they were never included in the ship. Uh, so all we got is the extremely close range phalanx Gatling gun system, has a range of about two miles, uh, and this. So the battleship is very much dependent on other ships in her task force for defense, uh, and very much dependent on her own armor to be able to tank those hits uh, to survive a, a missile attack. So, uh, just in case you're following along on your booklet of general plans from home, we are on the O5 level, um, right next to the amidships Mark 37 directors. And in the 80s, the Navy built out this platform specifically to mount the chaff launchers up here. How effective do you think a battleship's countermeasures would have been in the 80s? Let us know in the comment section down below. I don't think too highly of it, but uh, some of you guys who have served on ships equipped with these systems may think otherwise. Let me know what you think. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State 
and also from a number of other uh, private businesses and individuals. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us, and there's a link in the description if you'd like to continue helping. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing. That way more people find out about us and our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.